All right, I am Joe Wilson. I'm an artist, lead artist at Marset. I'm going to quickly uh, give a demo of our lighting system and various uh, methods for setting up uh, portrait lighting for characters. The, uh, so uh, what we're known for is our image-based lighting. And what image-based lighting is, is um, you have a 360-degree panoramic capture of an environment. And each little pixel in that panoramic image acts as a light source. Um, and this is really cool because you can get very high fidelity uh, lighting environments. You get more complex uh, reflections than you can with just uh, basic direct lights. Um, an another advantage of image-based lighting is that you can uh, quickly sw switch between um, different environments. So here's a bunch of uh, cube maps, uh, image-based lighting cube maps that I uh, that I captured myself in, in Japan on a recent trip here. So I can just swap to um, a different uh, sky lighting preset, and then I'll have uh, completely different lighting. I can quickly rotate it around here too. So here's a sweet uh, little alley in Tokyo. So it's really easy to like transport your model to uh, a completely different environment without spending a lot of time setting up like really custom lighting. So one of the major um, drawbacks to to image-based lighting in Toolbag is that because every pixel in the a map kind of acts as a light source, it's very expensive to like cast shadows from the image based lighting. So to, to help that, um, we can use the, uh, the ambient occlusion, which sort of helps to uh, get some soft occluded shadows. We can also add um, child lights, uh, which are directional lights. Um, so we have this little editor here. We can click any point on the uh, panorama, and it will uh, create a point or create a light from that point, that direction, and using the uh, color information from the panorama. You can also uh, create more, um, move them around, and update update them or easily delete them. Um, we've got some other uh, parameters here to adjust the like, basically the balance between the uh, IBL and the child light. So if if you want um, if you want to increase the contrast uh, in the light in the shadows, you can uh, turn up the child light brightness. You can turn use the the global brightness here to affect both, and um, the background brightness here to uh, kind of balance it out. Because when you add uh, child lights in addition to the IBL, sometimes your overall lighting can be brighter than your uh, the the background. So um, image-based lighting is really cool, um, but one of the major pitfalls that it has is if you want to really create a deliberate, specific lighting environment. Um, so you can you can go out and capture your own lighting environments or uh, try one of the the many ones that we have. Um, but a lot of the times you're going to want to um, have more control than that. So uh, that's where our uh, dynamic lights come into play. So we support, um, you know, the three standard uh, dynamic light types. Here's a basic omnidirectional light, spotlight, and uh, directional lights. So like it, which are good if you want to like uh, represent the light from a sun or something like that. Um, one of the relatively new features in Toolbag is the uh, area light feature. So area lights are really cool because you can find uh, a physical size to the light. So in, in reality, um, all light sources have some sort of size, even though in, in games we often have them like infinitely small points of light. So um, what the, the physical size of the light affects is how large the light source is, which, um, which defines how diffuse the light source is. 
So as I make the, the light source larger, you can see the, the shadows start to blur. And um, you can also see that the, the shape of the reflections in her eye will be uh, appropriately updated as well. So area lights are awesome. Um, Uh, a, a way that I like to um, kind of really clearly show what area lights do is uh, I've modeled these like studio light models and then I've sized uh, the area lights to a, a size that they would typically be with like a diffuser here and I've got a, a stretch tall diffuser and like a, an open an open bulb here um, and uh, a, a little cool trick is you can actually drag the Lord light source onto to, uh, your mesh object which will parent it to it so it, so now when you um, when you move the light or the, uh, the ob object around the light will follow so um, that's a basic over our basic technical overview of our lighting system um, I want to talk a little bit about the more artistic process of lighting so uh, there's three primary like types of of lights, uh, the basic foundational type types of lights. The first is a, a key light, or um, just really the primary light source. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is uh, placement. So one thing you want to truly try to avoid is um, the sort of deer in the headlights look you get when you have like a, a flash at the same position of the camera so you get that really flat lighting and you also want to avoid doing things like lighting the model from above I mean unless you're uh, like trying to make a horror scene or something like that so um, a really easy thing to do is take the light source and place it at about a 45 degree angle above and to the side of the of the model when I'm doing this is I'm I'm actually really trying to create a very specific uh, shape to the shadows. You can see as the the shadows fall on the face, it creates this little triangle shape on the cheek. This is known as uh, Rembrandt light lighting, and it's a really classic technique in uh, portrait lighting. So this is borrowed from like photog photography. So that's a that's a, a simple key light. Um, the second type of uh, basic light source is a uh, rim light. And what a, a rim light is, it's really just uh, usually a light placed behind the object and facing towards the camera. And rim lights are, um, they're very handy for um, like highlighting the silhouette of the object. So I'm going to crank this up really high. I'll make it a little blue. Um, when it comes to color for light, most lights have some sort of color, and there's not necessarily like a correct color. Um, a lot of times in uh, lighting and photography, um, you'll use like colored filters to get a cool creative effect. So uh, co the colors are just something you can have a lot of fun with. So if I turn off the skylight, you can see just uh, what the, ri the rim light does here. So you can see how it, it's uh, highlighting the uh, silhouette of uh, her shoulder and arm and the, the hair here. So that's a rim light. And um, the, thir the third basic type of light is uh, a fill light. And there's kind of two ways to make a fill light in tool bag tooling. So why it's called a filled light is because it's a light that usually fills in the shadows. So we can use the, the ambient image based lighting to uh, control the, uh, the contrast in the shadows. So if we want a very dramatic, uh, darkly lit uh, scene with like very dark sh shadows, we can turn down the ambient, uh, the ambient brightness here. And if we want to, we want a softer uh, look for like a more overcast day or something like that, we can uh, turn that up a bit.
You can also create a dynamic light to uh, control the fill as well. So a, a little trick I have here is to uh, throw a dynamic light in here, then give it some shape. And then I'm going to position this very uh, deliberately so that you get these little catch lights in the eyes. Duplicate that one and put it uh, up in the left hand side. So now I've got that classic little two catch lights in the in the eyes. It's a really cool thing you can do. Um, so now that I position these, I usually uh, turn down the uh, intensity so I'm not blowing out the rest of the lighting. And here you can see I, I can use this light to uh, really fill in the shadows, just like I, w I was doing with the uh, the ambient image lighting as well. Hey guys, we had some uh, technical difficulty here with the audio being corrupted, so I'm going to revoice the last bit of this tutorial. All right, so I'm going to add one final light here. Um, if I take a kind of stretched out diffused light source and then put it kind of uh, above and behind her head, you can see how the light um, spills over onto her hair and onto her shoulders and looks really cool. So that is a basic three-point light setup. The real reason why this is important to, um, to learn about is that once you understand what a key light does, uh, what a fill light does, uh, what a rim light does, and the different ways that you can use those types of lights, um, you can really apply that knowledge to a wide range of um, different uh, lighting situations. So that wraps up the lighting portion of this demo. Now I'm going to talk a bit about camera settings and post effects. When it comes to um, camera settings in regard to portraits, one of the most important things to understand is the relationship between the focal length or field of view of the lens and um, perspective distortion. So if I set up the camera to use a, sort of a wide angle lens, you can see that as I zoom in and fill the frame with her face that the perspective gets really um, exaggerated and um, just not flattering. Now if I use a longer focal length lens, um, this will compress the perspective and give a much uh, more pleasing look. Another key component of the uh, camera system is the depth of field effect, which allows you to blur um, what is either behind or in front of the focal plane. Um, this is really easy to set up. Once you've turned on depth of field, you can simply middle mouse click on your point of focus. Uh, so here I can uh, focus on the eyes and that will really help to isolate her. A really cool thing that you can do with the depth of field effect is to model some sort of abstract background shape. So here I've modeled like a cloud of uh, glitter basically, and then I've hit it with a couple uh, colored lights to give it some um, specular variation. Now when I go back and um, turn the depth of field effect back on, you can see that I get these really cool uh, colored uh, bokeh balls um, from the depth of field effect and this background mesh. You can also play with the um, various depth of field settings like the aperture shape to um, further customize this. Once I'm happy with my camera and lens settings, I usually start to think about uh, post effects. I do a lot of my post effects work with the curves tool, which allows you to not only do really quick contrast changes, but also basically remap the tonality of the image. Whether I'm processing photos or working on a render, my workflow is basically the same. So here I can um, throw a curve in, pull up the top end, and then um, pull down the shadows here to really just up the contrast of the image. Curves work on a per channel basis too, so I can flip to the blue channel, pull the curve up, and make sure that, uh, that the, the blue content does not clip to black. And then if I want to add some warmth to the shadows, I can switch to the red channel and then pull up the shadows a bit. We also support a variety of other post effects like exposure, contrast, sharpen, bloom, and vignetting. 
If you want to experiment with different rendering styles, it's very easy to duplicate your camera and try out some different post effects. For instance, here I want to go for um, more of a vintage look, so I'm going to uh, turn down the saturation and then pull up the curves editor and um, give it sort of a, uh, a sepia tone feel by um, pulling up some of the color content in the various color channels here. Then I can further push the sort of uh, vintage look here by cranking up the vignette effect as well. So that wraps up this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, special thanks to Vivian Herzog as well for letting me use her Victorian bust. Be sure to check out her portfolio. She's a really awesome artist. And be sure to check out our website for more tutorials and other information about uh, Marmoset Toolbag and our other products.